Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Mindful Monday. If it's your first time joining us, feel free to type in the comments where you're coming from. If you have any questions or comments, you can also type that there, as well as if you have a topic you'd like to hear covered on a future Mindful Monday, we'd love to hear about it. If that's not comfortable for you, feel free to direct message me as well. And again, if it is your first time joining us and you type the word mindful into uh, comments on any platform that you are watching upon, uh, after the recording, of course, I'll go back and put a link. If you follow that link, you'll get the weekly PDFs that are basically bullet points of what we cover each week. They come out Sundays at 6.45 p.m. You'll also get a free hypnotic recording I uh, did on uh, releasing limiting beliefs. All right. And so today we are here to talk about how we can connect to our spirit guides, I'm sorry, sorry, spirit animals uh, for protection, wisdom, guidance kind of things. And so last week it was spirit guides, that's why I got confused. And last week uh, we came to this topic because my little kitty, one of my little kitty cats decided to, she was all sleepy, sleepy, behaving so well. So I was like, oh, I'll just let her out here. And then as soon as the, the Facebook live started, she started running all around. <laughs> she crashed the, the Facebook live, it was so cute. So I made a joke and now folks wanna hear about spirit animals. So here we are talking about spirit animals. So what are spirit animals you might ask? So basically my definition is they're guides that kind of help us in life. Um, they can direct us or, you know, teach us lessons. So they can be called uh, teachers as far as new age philosophy is concerned. They can be called teachers, uh, messengers, guides, uh, possibly even omens, some people will call them. Uh, but there are kind of differences because this kind of the actual term, uh, you know, spirit animal kind of derives from indigenous cultures. So a spirit animal would be considered an ally who helps teach or guide you, whereas a power animal is a creature that empowers you. You might just connect with that kind of sense of them. And a totem animal, which is more the indigenous culture, uh, it refers to a creature that is inherited as a custom in many indigenous or tribal cultures. And sometimes that's for a person, sometimes it's for the whole culture kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to talk more about the new age philosophy and we're not aiming to offend anybody here or anything like that. Just kind of differentiating so that folks know. And so why would someone want to find their spirit animal, one might say? Well, because integrating their energy, their medicine, if you will, um, and their lessons into kind of your own being can, number one, it can be a spiritual awakening for some folks. And number two, it can kind of be life changing and kind of give you some direction as well. You might find that your senses become more acute. Um, you might feel more connected to all that is because it, everything and everyone is all connected. Um, your instincts will sharpen and you might even find courage to make difficult choices, ability to communicate better, uh, speaking your own truth that is. Um, you will be more tuned in to your intuition and better able to understand and regulate your own emotions. Kind of touches upon um, some of the chakras, if you will, there as well. So how does this work? So first of all, it's important to say that a spirit animal, as far as new age philosophy is concerned, is really a part of you. Okay, it's not a separate entity. It's not like spirit guides are a little bit different. So a spirit animal is kind of a part of you. And so we're all connected. And when one soul kind of cries out for something that is missing animals and their spirits, if you will, or souls, naturally can hear our pain because they don't have a need to kind of filter things out like humans do. So they rely on intuition and instinct to survive. So when we're calling out for them, we're kind of calling out to a part of ourselves and we must call out for them for them to show up. They're not just gonna show up, just like spirit guides just don't show up um, and like, you know, that's kind of like a, something like, from what I understand, a poltergeist that things just start throwing off shelves for you. But spirit animals are a little different than spirit guides. So our spirit animals, we have to call them, but then the animal actually chooses us. And so it is that part of us that kind of needs nurturing, if you will. So when we're calling out for our spirit animal, we're calling out for the part of ourselves that might have been fragmented, injured, or kind of lost by life's little or big traumas, if you will. And this is why soul retrieval is a part of shamanism. So going back to the indigenous like heritage of this. So when we're talking more new age though, because I'm not indigenous, so I'm not gonna try and go there. And I'm not a shaman. Okay, so how do I connect to my spirit animal from a new age philosophy kind of thing? So one of the things that you can really do is you can pay attention 
to animals that show up in your life. I live on this beautiful piece of property and I like to go for a morning walk and I'm always amused by the animals that kind of come up to me kind of things. In fact, the kitty cat that crashed across um, our last Facebook Live, she showed up on the property and I was feeding her. She was a starved little thing and now she's a little chunk, I call her. <laughs> so uh, one of my spirit animals is definitely the cat. Um, so you also want to notice what animals not only appear in nature around you, but also what appear in your dreams, if any, because that can be very telling as well. Uh, you might want to spend more time in nature, actually. You might meditate and journal to get more in touch with these things as well. So a basic meditation technique for finding one spirit animal goes something like this. You'll want to, of course, settle into a quiet place. You don't want to be texting and meditating. That's not going to work very well. Uh, and then um, typically you'll protect your space to begin such a, a sacred kind of meditation. So you can use crystals, I'm a Reiki master, I might do Reiki, I use essential oils. You can also call upon um, the four directions. You can simply say, um, you would turn to the east first if you're going to do that, and uh, simply say, I bless you and ask for your wisdom and blessing. Um, here with me today and please join me and protect me spirit of the east and then you would turn and you would do the same thing uh, to the south and then to the west and then to the north and you would turn back to the east maybe touch the ground grounding yourself kneel down and kind of say and so it is you know and then you'll settle in um, so you would be sitting or lying down to do this in a comfortable position yet they say because this kind of is like opening with up the chakras as well, you'll want your spine to be aligned so you don't want to be all like contorted kind of thing. So a nice long spine and of course settling in in whatever way works best for you. I like to take some deep breaths, close my eyes. You can do a body scan if that works. You really want to relax your mind, relax your body, relax your breathing. And then when you're ready, uh, you'll want to kind of ask, you know, your spirit animal to uh, appear if you will. And so just invite it in to come forward. You have to be patient, however. You know, don't just be like, come here. <laughs> it's not like, here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> um, and so just be patient, trust the process, and then thank it when it does come forward. I know that it, it might take a couple of practices for it to come forward, but just really being patient and trusting. If you're in doubt, you're kind of turning off that kind of energy as well. So it can take some time. When it does come forward, thank it. Don't doubt it, just go with the first thing that shows up, kind of is, and then ask this, the animal that does show up, are you my spirit animal, basically. Um, and then ask it what kind of messages it has for you. Make sure to um, kind of express to it that you're willing to hear what it has to say, even if it has things that are a little difficult to hear kind of things. So you want to be open and honest. Um, and just listen. Um, you'll intuitively kind of know when this is complete. And then when you're ready, you'll slowly return to the outer world, the present world, the waking kind of state. Um, if you started with the four directions, thank the four directions. Thank uh, Mother Earth, Father Sky, uh, anyone else you want to thank. And I typically um, do work, and I'm not a big journal, but this is something I will journal about because you kind of get these neat little insights. You can also look up the symbolism. It's better to get it from your spirit guides because the, the, the symbolism that you can look up anywhere online is very, you know, um, canned, if you will. Um, but for instance, a bear spirit animal might uh, symbolize strength and confidence. A butterfly could be transformation. Cats are independent and curious. Coyotes can be playful and adaptable. Crows are intelligent. Uh, deer, that's one of mine too, is uh, gentle and innocent. Dogs are loyalty and love, dragonflies are transformation, adaptability, and, and so on and so on. But again, you know, you would really want to kind of um, ask your spirit animal what they're bringing to you. So I hope this has been useful for you. I hope it's been fun as well. And uh, make it a great Mindful Monday. We'll see you next week. Take care.